This podcast covers the topic of indifference curves. You will learn about indifference curves, their shapes, and other assumptions used in the theory of consumer choice. Consider again Mary and her utility function. Given any basket A, it is useful to introduce the following concepts. The set of baskets that give Mary a higher level of utility than A, the set of baskets that give Mary a lower level of utility than A, and the set of baskets that give the same level of utility than A. This last concept is very important and is called the indifference curve that passes through the basket A. Let me repeat it. An indifference curve is the set of all consumption baskets that give a consumer the same level of utility. It turns out that the indifference curves and their shape play a very important role in the economics of consumer choice. A very important and common assumption is called non-satiation. A simple version of this assumption says that for any basket A, if you add any positive quantity of all the goods, then the consumer is better off. In other words, for any two baskets with the same goods 1 and 2, A equal x1, x2, and B equal y1, y2, with y1 bigger than x1 and y2 bigger than x2, we have that the utility of y1, y2 is bigger than the utility of x1, x2. That is, the utility of B is bigger than the utility of A. So B is preferred to A because it has more of both goods, right? Does this assumption say that consumers always prefer more to less? That's right. This is another way to explain this assumption. Now, with this assumption, we know that given a basket A, all the baskets in the region to the northeast must give a higher utility to the consumer and all the baskets in the region to the southwest must give a lower level of utility to the consumer. As a result, it is easy to understand why the indifference curve passing through A is a decreasing curve. And what about the northwest and southeast areas? Good point. We do not know whether a consumer prefers these baskets to A. In fact, some of these baskets will make Mary happier, some will make her less happy, and some she'll be indifferent about. Aha! So the indifference curves have to pass through the points in these regions since we know for sure that Mary is better or worse off in the green and red areas. Yes, and we know this because of the assumption of non-satiation. In fact, the exact shape of the indifference curve requires more information, but for now we can see that it could look like this, or this, or this. None of these indifference curves violate the non-satiation assumption. So are you saying that by making the assumption of more is better, we know for sure that the indifference curves are decreasing? That's right. In fact, the indifference curve will be like the boundary between the baskets that Mary prefers to weigh and those that she does not prefer to weigh. The region to the northeast of the indifference curve is composed of baskets that give her a higher utility, while all the baskets in the region to the southwest must give her a lower utility to the consumer. Now I want to introduce another assumption that is often used in consumer theory. The assumption is based on the idea that in many cases, not all the time, consumers like diversification. Or in other words, that uh, the average basket is always better, or at least as good, than the extreme baskets. Uh, to tell you the truth, I'm a bit confused. Okay. First, let me try to explain the assumption with our usual consumer, Mary. Take two baskets, A and B, on the same indifference curve. Now, take the basket C, that is the average basket between A and B. The assumption is that Mary likes C better than A and B. Is it clear? Uh, yes and no. What is the average basket, though? It is pretty much what it says. It is a basket composed by the average quantities of the two baskets. So, for example, if A is the basket containing three units of coffee and one unit of eggs, and B is the basket containing one unit of coffee and two units of eggs, 
the average basket C contains 2 units of coffee and 1.5 units of eggs. Graphically, given any two baskets A and B, the average basket between them is always on the segment that connects the two points A and B. Is it clear now? Yeah, so what does this assumption imply? That's a good question. Remember, when we introduced the assumption that for Mary more is better, we said that the indifference curve must be decreasing. Yeah, I remember that. Good. With this new assumption, we can say more. In fact, if Mary likes average better than the extremes, the indifference curve passing through the basket A cannot look like this or like this. Okay, so the indifference curves for Mary can only look like this. This is right. As a special case, as we want, we want to see what happens if the consumer has preference that look like this or like this. But in general, we'll consider preferences that give us indifference curves that are smooth and convex. This podcast was an introduction to the indifference curves, the shape of the indifference curves, and two more assumptions in, that we use in consumer theory non-satiation and convexity of preferences.